Whew. All right, well, this is definitely not the next planned video. Um, been, been obviously wearing a turbo car, and that was supposed to be the next video, but that's been uh, kind of in a holding pattern for, I don't know, about a month now. But we'll come back to that another time. Um, today's, as seen in the description, we had a little boo boo. Something don't look right. For reference, let's just, just look at the other side. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Ooh. Ooh. So last night was just going out shopping, no big deal. It was raining when I left. And I was leaving the last store, come outside, and like the temperature had like dropped drastically. Which, eh, whatever, you know what? That's she's the beater, driver in winter. Um, I've been driving it more than I do the truck. So I go to leave at that last store and I'm pulling out of the parking lot. Now mind you, it's just foot off the brake, coasting onto the road nice and slowly because I figured it was a little bit slippery. Proceeded to turn the wheel and the car didn't turn. So at like five mile an hour, foot on the brake, all that fun stuff, we uh, found the curb. And uh, I kind of figured I did something to the wheel. Well. What's funny is there's there's really no damage to the wheel. The tire still has air. And I was still able to turn. I was feeling resistance on the tire and gave it some gas and it still moved. So um, I just kind of proceeded to drive her home nice and slow. And uh, once I got home, I took a good look and found what I just showed you, which I had to go to work. So. Here we are about to pull it in and see what the damage is. You know, for having a great weather January, winter finally showed up. Let's see. It's still going. <laughs> oh. Oh God. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, he's bleeding. Say so we got a problem. All right, well so far, definitely knuckle. But let me get this wheel off. Let's see, uh, oh, what else is going on here? Oh, so much grease. All right, so. Oh, wow. Jeez. Okay, then. So this thing took the whole brunt of it. That's crazy. Are my spring still good? Yep, spring's still good. Apparently the strut's still good. All right, then. Well, um, we'll think on that one. I may... God, I hate doing boots, but I'm kind of curious if I damage that joint.
damage report. Structurally, I think we're good. However, this just became a laundry list. So, they did blow out the ball joint, which means we're gonna do a control arm because by the time I do all the work to try to undo the rivets, I can spend the same, if not a little bit more than a ball joint price and just get a whole control arm. So we'll do that, which means it looks like we're gonna do stab links, even though I just changed them damn things. Look at that. Um, axle, so not only is the, the boot blown, but it has insane amount of playing. You can see it, it's, yeah, it's pretty toasted. Caliper's good, brake pads look good, struts good. Um, obviously, so a knuckle toasted, wool bearing toasted, um, that tie rod was toasted as well, plus trying to get it off um, wasn't working out very well. Um, I'm going to clean this up, but I'm going to guess to say this is probably fine too, it's just it's coated in grease from the axle. For how rusty this car is, I'd say that's pretty much uh, a win in some kind of way, because <laughs> everything that's broke can re be replaced easily. Um, I'll get to shopping, get things on the way, and get this thing back together. The only downfall is messing with these parts. I'm going to lose my alignment, and I know this car is to the point it's... There's probably nowhere I can take it to get it done, just because of how bad it is. So... Just gotta make her last for a little bit longer. I've got extra spare tires to get me through. Overall, it saves me a lot driving this thing over the truck, so it's worth just kinda keeping her going. So I kind of saved you guys from the boring part of reassembling, but uh, everything's good, was, was going good anyway. Uh, there's some light. So pro arms in, sway bar links in, new tie rod, you know, no big deal. New knuckles in, wool bearing, had the brakes all put together. But then um, they put the axle in, put everything back together. Um, everything felt good when I popped the axle in, put my axle nut on, put the strut back in, put it back on the floor, and then we got that. So then I looked, and the snout was pulled back out from the transmission. I thought that was kind of weird, so I pulled everything back apart to try to get it to pop in, and noticed it was kind of looking stretched. So, popped the axle back out, Brad right, said, well, let's grab the old one and just make sure they didn't send you the wrong one. Here's our difference. So I measured 23 inches compressed on the original, and I'm getting 21 and I think a quarter or whatever on this new one. Went back and looked and verified that is exactly what they sold me, so I didn't get the wrong part. But what they're listing now is this 21 and some change as both sides. Now I'm talking Rock Auto, 1A Auto. O'Reilly's advanced. Everybody is now doing this for some reason. Um, it was in seated, but then as soon as we ran the axle nut on, it pulled it right back out. At this point, I'm probably just going to go to a junkyard, but I'm now quite curious because I know I'm not the only one that's going to need to change an axle. I did some deeper research, and this specific axle and these part numbers, whether it be the brand I, I think, whatever the brand I got, brand I got to Cardone to whatever they're listing this specific 21 and some inch axle as a universal fit for um, I think from 97 all the way to 2009 um, across various GM front wheel drive vehicles it's odd but I'm not surprised it seems like they're consolidating um, aftermarket replacement parts 
you know, obviously to save cost. So what ended up being the problem, and it was actually, the more I started playing with that axle, the more I saw um, what they did. So that thing actually has a lot of extension to it. And it makes sense why that part number comes back for that variety of um, lengths. Now I had tried to put the old one back on and it was doing the same thing the new one was doing, so I figured I had a problem. So I didn't get to take a video because I was kind of working with frustration, but the the little snub that comes out of here, there's also like, like a ring around it. Um, that actually acts as like a spacer and made up for that difference I was missing um, between the CV and the trans. So I was right that I was fully engaging and, and locking in, but because I didn't have that that outer ring, that's why it was leaking. Once I put that piece in, I shoved it back in the car, um, and then I kind of let the car back down to put, you know, gravity towards that side to see if it'll leak. And it sat for four or five hours and didn't leak. Back together, and I just um, was checking the trans fluid. You can see I've got it up. On blocks to level it off. Make sure we're not dripping still. Oh, blinky blinky. Battery's gonna die. Yeah, just gotta put some tires on, take it for a test drive to make sure the transmission's good, but um Yeah, all that shenanigans over hitting a curb. So gotta love that, but um hopefully that kind of gives some insight. I'm also gonna follow up on the um the pages about this and how uh they do that one size fits all as far as the CV axle. That had me a little concern there, but now it all makes sense. But uh, yeah, so that's all I got for this one. I guess I just want to kind of cover a little bit of a journey of what happens when you break stuff. And hopefully you have a little more insight on uh, some of these replacement parts. But as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.